Welcome to Paragon Bows. This is Rob speaking. Today I would like to show you my new bow, uh, which is this in my hand. I always wanted to have a Mongolian style medieval bow and finally managed to build it. Uh, this is inspired by Mongolian conquest era bows, the Chagan card and the, and the Onnagok bow, the shape of the bow but not the tips. I'm gonna show them to you in a second. But first, as you can see, it's quite gently curved all the way up to the tips in the unstrung position. The length of the bow, the full length of the bow measured on the belly side is 52.5 inches and the bow is 50.5 inches knock to knock. So it's a short bow. This bow is actually somewhere in between the Solak and our flagship model which is the Raider size wise. So it's a little bit longer than, than the Solak but it's shorter than the Raider. The bow was made exactly the same way as I built the Raider bows. I used this stabilizing material on the belly side of the bow which worked extremely well on the radar design, gives a fantastic lateral stability to the bow. Uh, there is no stable core in the bow, same as the radar. Uh, built in dual uh, arrow passes, but also you can order the bow with a leather grip and the sweet, sweet arrow passes. So this is the bow with a, with a strong position. As you can see, the string is on the bow and the bracing height is quite short on this bow. It's only six and a half inches, uh, which is 16.5 centimeters. So it's quite short, but the, uh, the grip has actually has a little bit of a setback area here. So that makes it a little bit short, but it works very well with this uh, design and it's very, very stable. The bow has short curved limbs. The limbs are tapered at the center to concentrate the bending area into this section, same way as, as it's done on the Solak and the Raider. And it's got a very, very long Mongolian style saya, which I said a few minutes ago, I will explain. The shape of the bow inspired by the Mongolian conquest era bows, but I changed the design on the saya and I used similar design, which you can see here, very similar design to the later Mughal bows. Basically, I'm just gonna show you this quickly. I copied the design of from one of my old horn bows, which you can see here. This is an unfinished horn bow. It's a Mughal bow, but this is a design which was used on the Mughal bows. And that's where I got the inspiration from. So, the bow is very stable and uh, easy to shoot, even for beginners. Uh, it's a short version, shorter than the Raider, but longer than the Solak. The, the length of the string is 115 centimeters, same as the Solak string, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to put this bow on the tillering wall so you can see how the bow bends. The maximum draw length of the bow is 32 inches. Well, I recommend 31 inches because 31 inches is the bow still feels good, but at 32 inches it starts stacking. So the maximum draw length of the bow is 32 inches. The bow is built, or you can order the bow from uh, 28 pounds up to 60 pounds measured at 28 inches. So let's put the bow on the tillering wall now, and then we're going to chrono the bow. We're going to shoot it at the target. Right, we are in the workshop now and the bow is on the tillering wall. So I'm going to draw the bow now so you can see how the bow bends at 28 inches and then 31 inches. The maximum draw length is, is 32 inches. I'm going to draw the bow to 32 inches as well. So you can see what the bow looks like at maximum draw length. So let's start. So the bow is on the wall. I'm drawing it now. As you can see, the bow is bending beautifully. I stopped at 28 inches now. This is 
considered to be the average draw length of most archers and the bow has already a good looking shape at this stage so let's go to 31 this is 31 inches and it looks a little bit like a like a crab bow at this point now and if you go to 32 this is the maximum draw length but like i said earlier i would recommend to use the bow at 31 inches because 32 inches is 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 a little bit borderline it, it starts stacking at 32 inches so take a look at the bow as you can see i i mentioned earlier the bending section the tapered bending section in the limbs at midsection where i'm actually forcing the bow to bend it's tapered and you can see the bow is bending beautifully there and the long sire sections are actually pushing the limbs inwards at this drong low draw length so that's what makes the bow stacking because if you go back to 31 here the limbs are straight that's why i recommend it 31 inches because once you start bending the limbs back that's when the bow starts stacking okay we are outside now and uh, we're going to shoot the bow at, at the at the target uh, this is a test bow in my hand uh, this bow is 42 pounds at 28 inches and 53 pounds at 31 inches um, i'm going to be using these carbon arrows today uh, these arrows arrived yesterday from china i ordered them from ruby zoo from ulei bambo uh, the length of the arrow is a little bit under 31 inches 30.5 inches and 500 spine and 7.5 gpp so let's see what it does with this ball. One nine six. One nine six. One nine two. Two zero four. Two zero one. Two zero nine, and I ran out of arrows. So let's see what's the average. I've got the application on my phone here. So these are the shots. The last shot was two zero nine, and as you can see, the average feet per second is one nine nine. So we are very very close to two hundred feet per second. So this is what an average weight can bow does for you. Thank you. Thanks for watching.